Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. In this episode, the Indian Space Research Organization has successfully launched Chandrayaan-2, a mission designed to land on and study the South Pole of the Moon. The successful launch occurred July 22nd, 2019, after a couple of delays, and the spacecraft is now on its way. But why go to the South Pole? What's so great about that spot? Well, NASA is also planning to go there with the Artemis mission, so stick around and learn more. This summer has been an exciting one for space fans interested in space exploration. As we learned in the last episode, Germany and Russia successfully launched the SRG X-ray telescope. And last week, we also celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. And this week, we have another thing to celebrate. The Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, just launched Chandrayaan-2, a mission that's on its way to the moon with the goal of landing on the lunar South Pole and deploying a rover. So let's start at the beginning. Chandrayaan-2 was launched on India's most powerful rocket, the Geosynchronous Satellite Launched Vehicle, or GSLV, Mark III, a rocket capable of putting four tons of satellite up into Earth's geosynchronous orbit. The vehicle successfully launched on July 22nd after a couple of delays from the Sriharakota Space Station, and according to reports from the ISRO, the spacecraft is on its way to the moon. This marks India's second mission to Earth's closest celestial neighbor. The first, Chandrayaan-1, orbited the moon, but it did not land. That mission was among the first to discover rather large quantities of water ice, especially near the lunar South Pole. This mission, Chandrayaan-1, occurred back in 2008, and so a little over a decade later, Chandrayaan-2 built on the knowledge obtained back then to design this mission a lunar lander mission designed to explore more of the South Pole of the Moon. So why is the lunar South Pole the place to be? Because if we are to build and maintain a prolonged human presence on the Moon, using as much of the resources that are already there is really an important step. It's what NASA calls ISRU, or in situ re resource utilization. And it's basically the idea that what we can use there makes the journey easier because we don't have to schlep a lot of stuff with us. And that's especially true with water. Water is heavy. It weighs almost four kilograms. That's six pounds for us Americans. And carrying enough to last any length of time is impractical. But missions like Chandrayaan-1 and NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have mapped out potential landing sites for a, pro a prolonged human presence on the moon. And it turns out that the South Pole is one of the best places to go. Recent research has found that due to the tilt of the moon with respect to the sun, there are more areas of the lunar surface in permanent shadow in the South Pole, which and this makes more places for ice to form and to stay there. So by looking in the crags and craters where the sun never shines, it, we may yield lots of water ice that can be used by human habitation. And one of the most exciting results from the Chandrayaan-1 mission was that there was more concentrated ice in the craters of the South Pole than previously thought. NASA's Artemis program has selected this area also to go uh, to for the next human mission there, so we need to learn as much about this region as we can before going there, which is where this mission, the Chandrayaan-2, comes in. It consists of three main components. It has an orbiter, it has a lander, and it has a rover, and it will travel to the moon in a way that I kind of think is really cool. It's not just gonna go straight there in, in a straight shot using a huge rocket to break it free of Earth's gravity. Instead, what it will do is it will follow a 48-day trajectory where it will orbit the Earth in increasingly, successively increasing orbits where each orbit will sling the spacecraft out a little further each time. And it will do this for 23 days until it gets to a point where the Earth's gravity is quite weak compared to the moon and the moon starts to take over. So there, and from there, there's a period of about seven days where Chandrayaan-2 transitions from being in Earth orbit out to being under the influence of the lunar gravitational pull. Then it will enter a lunar-bound phase for about 13 days where the moon will pull it closer 
And then, 43 days after launch, a lot happens really quickly. The lander and the orbiter separate, the orbiter inserts itself into lunar orbit, and the lander sets itself up for its descent. And on day 48, the lander will touch down on the lunar surface and get ready to deploy the rover. Now, the orbiter will keep the communication lines open between India's deep space network and the Vikram lander, and it will always be available because the orbiter will be in a 100 kilometer polar orbit where the spacecraft will always have a direct line of sight with the Earth. The Vikram lander, which is named after one of the pioneers of the Indian space program, will be online for one lunar day, which is 14 Earth days. Remember, the rotation rate of the moon is equal to its orbital period around the Earth, which is 28 days. And the sun rises and sets on the moon twice during that time and that is a lunar day. The planned landing site is a high plane between two craters, Manz Manzanus C and Sempelius N, which is very much down near the South Pole. And it will then, once it gets there, release the rover, which is the third component of the mission. Pragyan rover looks a lot like other rovers out there. It has six wheels and a solar panel that sticks up to provide power. It travels at about a centimeter per second, and it will send images to the lander where they will then be relayed up back up to the orbiter for transition for transmission to Earth. And there are a lot of instruments on the mission. The orbiter will have cameras galore. It'll have X-ray and IR spectrometers, solar radiation detectors, and it will even have an instrument to measure the lunar ionosphere. And that's right. I bet you didn't know that the moon has an atmosphere, but it's very thin and it is there. The lander will have a seismometer on board to measure moonquakes, which uh, is very important to know about, and it will have another sensor that will measure the atmosphere of the moon from the surface. And there are spectrometers also on board that will help detect various elements, most importantly, water on the, that might be on the surface, and it will also have a host of other experiments. The lander will drive around and measure the topography and give us an idea of what the terrain is like. So this mission is very comprehensive and it's immensely important in helping us understand what the Lunar South Pole is like to help us prepare for a human presence there. And as I mentioned before, NASA's Artemis program is looking at the South Pole of the Moon as its initial landing spot for when we return human beings to the Moon sometime in the 2020s. <laughs> Now, notice I've gotten a little vague about dates here. We have all learned that lesson, haven't we? <laughs> so, well done, ISRO and members of the Chandrayaan-2 mission team. Now, I'm looking forward to the next stage in a few weeks where the excitement, where the excitement will really start to mount as you guys approach the moon. So, Godspeed and good luck as the mission progresses. And as it gets closer, I'll be sure to keep you posted. Well, that's it for this episode, Space Fans. I want to thank all of my Deep Astronomy Patreon patrons for your support in making SFN con uh, possible. And if you guys like this content, please consider becoming one yourself. And I want to thank also OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories for both amateur and professional astronomers. And thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, keep it.